During holiday travel, some people get delirious. Some get delayed. And some get <laughs> Del Griffin. American Light and Fixture, Director of Sales, Shower Curtain Ring Division. Neil Page got all three. I was on my way home to spend a nice holiday with my family. Instead, I'm in a motel bed with a stranger. So instead of Thanksgiving with his family, he's spending three days with the turkey. People! Two happy clams just whistling down the road. Flintstones, meet the Flintstones, they're the modern family. Paramount Pictures presents... Wilma! Steve Martin. You ever been to Hawaii? Yeah. You see Don Ho while you were there? You see the second show, that's the best one. Is that right? Yeah. John Candy. Why are you holding my hand? Where's your other hand? Between two pillows. Those aren't pillows. In a new film by John Hughes. Planes, trains, and automobiles. See that Bears game last week? Yeah, hell of a game, hell of a game. Welcome to Movie Humpers. My name is whoop, Bob Sham. <laughs> My name I is. I got the hat on. Angela. This time of the year, maybe dogs. It is that time of the year, Thanksgiving time. And Thanksgiving, no shit. People are always like, nobody's favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. Uh, it's my favorite holiday. I don't know why it's not more people's favorite holiday. It has the best food. I mean, the weather's lovely usually depending on where you are christmas, we like fall christmas is just this the christmas food other than the sweets is the same as thanksgiving but maybe you're you switched up the protein or something i think people just like christmas when you're young because of presents and then you're just supposed to or something if you're a child and you prefer christmas over thanksgiving makes sense understood halloween too yeah, I get I it. I still prefer Halloween, but it's just more about the movies and the scary stuff. My favorite food holiday, 1000% Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It's like Halloween, Thanksgiving. It's a very, very close second. And we're good at it, too. We can throw it down. I make the hell out of some turkey and dressing and gravy. And no, we're not bringing you a ham because you prefer ham. You know why you prefer ham over turkey? Um, well, if you're like a vegan or vegetarian, I get it. Uh, if well, you, you wouldn't eat if ham. you wouldn't want either. So, but the reason why you prefer ham over turkey is because your mom can't make a turkey to save her. Because if you had a perfectly hard. cooked turkey, you'd want the turkey. You'd want the. Turkey. I will admit that the first few years was a learning experience. They always are. But now I've got it down, man. But look, Thanksgiving, I mean, a lot of people will harp on the the exceptionalist. It's not really a myth. There's some truth to it in which the pilgrims, eh, who everyone fucking hated, everyone hated the pilgrims from Europe to here. The I forget the name of the Massachusetts tribe in which they had that harvest with. I mean, Thanksgiving is just a harvest holiday. Tons of countries have harvest holidays, but the American harvest ho- holiday has to be like wrapped up in some exceptionalist mythology, right? It was like a bad winter that year and they had to come together and the indigenous people in that region were like, okay, well, this is how you do this shit. But they didn't like each other. And yeah. actually, now that I think about it, every year having a big meal with people you don't like. I guess that is... It's tradition. I guess that is... Uh, I guess that <laughs> does make sense. I don't have that problem, though. <laughs> no, I, we like our people. At least the last several Thanksgivings, we've really got it down. You know, we've really got it down. But I'm just saying, Thanksgiving, you just show up. You, you're with people you love. You, you eat great food, hopefully. Um, and that's it. You don't have to buy anything. You maybe at the most have to get money to make a dish. You know? Yep. If your family, we're gonna have a fire if outside. If your family can't cook, I'm sorry. I'm, I grew up with a family that thought they were better cooks than they really were, till I grew up and figured shit out. But, but yeah, it's Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving genuinely. Me too. All exceptionalist blowhard bullshit aside, it's just a harvest holiday, and we're all getting together and we're eating some grub. And this movie we're discussing today has become, you know, there's not a lot of Thanksgiving movies, mm-hmm. uh, especially not compared to like Christmas or 
Halloween, like not even close. But they're coming up in the world, and there's this one that we're discussing today, our second ever John Hughes movie. And John Hughes, you know, noted for making movies about teenagers with attitude. Mm -hmm. And Uh, parents being dumb. But yes, but this one is more grown you know, growing up a lot, when you mentioned John Hughes, it's always Ferris Bueller, 16 Candles, Breakfast Club. Pretty in pink. But I feel like over time, this movie that we're discussing today, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, has quietly kind of become uh, what a lot of people might want the most out of the John Hughes collection. Mm. And it has become, I mean, I honestly think, I don't think it's a perfect movie, but mm. there are things that I really like about it. Yeah. And it is kind of a warm movie. It's got the message of acceptance and bringing people in and friendship. Mm -hmm. You got Neil, played by Steve Martin, who's a stuck-up, impatient asshole. And then you got Del Griffith, who talks too much. He's rude, but he's also, like, the really nice guy. So they balance each other out. And this Del Griffith, played by John Candy. Yeah. The late, great John Candy. Amazing John Candy. We love you, John Candy. And there is something warm about this movie yes. to me. But there is some things like... I feel like the music in John Hughes movies are just so all... They just feel so all over the place. Yeah. Some songs you like and other songs are like, why does... Why is that there? You know, I feel like in Ferris Bueller, it worked out... It played out pretty well. Mm-hmm. But in this one, it just felt more like you just hit shuffle on... On uh, some multi-genre playlist. Yeah, I don't know. When, and like the, the songs came in maybe too hard. But there's some good and some like, what's going on? None of it like hit me over the head. Because even as we're sitting here, I'm trying to recall like, was there a music? Was there a song that felt really weird to me? And I can't pick one out. Well, so there's one. Terrible. Well, there's one. And I think we heard glimpses of it. But it played at the end of the credits. Some kind of... I forget the name of the person. I think it was like someone called Yolo who made the original music for Ferris Bueller. That oh yeah, oh yeah. But it, I don't know if it's the same person, but it was something like that. And they used voice clips from the characters of Neil and Del Griffith in the splice oh, into no. the movie. It's like you're doing like some record skip with like Steve Martin lines. I guess I left the room before that played. And it's so bizarre. <laughs> it's so bizarre. But let's get into the movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles from 1987, directed by John Hughes. Written by John Hughes, produced by John Hughes. Hangs in Chicago. Well, they're on the way to Chicago. They're trying to get to Chicago. John Hughes' hometown, starring Steve Martin and the late great John Hughes. Candy. Uh, this might be my favorite Thanksgiving movie, but I prefer the porn parody. Fleshlights, cock rings, and foxtail butt plugs. Oh my. <laughs> and that's in that movie, it's just as a war- just as warm. The message is still good, but Del- that's what Del Griffith is trying to sell. That's so Neil. specific. Foxtail butt plugs. butt plugs. And fleshlights were not invented at that time. This porn parody came years later. But when he's go ahead, Del Griffith is trying to sell these products to Neil, and it takes the whole movie until Neil warms up to him, and then and Del's like, "If you just let me use these products on you." You'll see that they practically sell themselves. That scene where they share the bed is probably and by most the, of the movie. By right? the end of the movie, they're using the products on each other. Okay. This isn't this has gone long enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing when you just make the joke of the porn parody name, but you don't really need to play by play. So planes, trains, and automobiles, it's a road movie. It is. We go from New York to Wichita to Kansas City. And then up to Chicago. Yes. But th- there's like mishaps going on. He's a, a Neil's an ad executive. He's trying to get home. He wants to get on the six o'clock flight. He's he works with the dad from um, Ferris, Ferris Bueller. Bueller. He works with Ferris Bueller's dad. I, apparently the name is different, but I like to pretend it's the same it guy. It is his dad. It's Ferris Bueller's dad because he's from Chicago too and works in New York. I think his name was Tom and Ferris Bueller, but John and Planes Trains. But we'll say like Ferris Bueller's dad's name is. 
Jonathan. Thomas Jonathan. Thomas Jonathan. Sure. Listen, Thomas Jonathan Bueller. Yeah, so it all ties in. And there's also plenty of other characters from Ferris Bueller that you'll see in here. That just pop up. I'm sure they're throughout John Hughes. Oh, Ferris yeah. Kid. The secretary from Ferris yeah, Bueller she's... moonlights at the at the car rental place. Yeah. At the and Neil just goes on a, free, a freaking tirade after he has sold a rental card that is not there. How may I help you? You can start by wiping that fucking dumbass smile off your rosy fucking cheeks. Then you can give me a fucking automobile, a fucking Datsun, a fucking Toyota, a fucking Mustang, a fucking Buick, four fucking wheels and a seat. I really don't care for the way you're speaking to me. And I really don't care for the way your company left me in the middle of fucking nowhere with fucking keys to a fucking car that isn't fucking there. I mean, that would be pretty awful. Yeah, but you don't go like that. You know, we all know that's not going to do you any good. But yeah, I mean, listen, the amount of things that go wrong in this movie is insane. Like Kevin Bacon is cock blocking his cab at the beginning. Kevin Bacon has the best cameo in this (laughs) because he doesn't say a word. He's just a total douchebag. And then he's trying to bribe a guy to take his cab. But while he's bribing the cab, some dude with a big trunk... Act, takes the cab. It's an accident, but he get, finally gets to the airport and he realizes it's John Candy, Del Griffith, and that's when they formally meet each other. And once you get to know Del, you realize that he didn't take the cab on purpose. He probably walked up to the curb and went, what good luck. Yeah. I got this cab. He's just kind of a generally positive guy. And I think yeah. we get a few more flaws as we go in. Because he does kind of take his credit card at some point, right? Like, he knows it's not his, but, like... He he, uses a credit card that he knows is not his. He didn't take it on purpose. So, he's got his business... Dell has his business bag, but he's carrying a whole trunk around with him, which is a pretty big clue as to his status. But... Well, they hide it well because he's a salesman, and you just assume that his trunk is full of shower curtain ring. Dell Griffith, American Light and Fixture, Director of Sales, Shower Curtain Ring Division. I sell shower curtain rings. Best in the world. Yeah. And in the porn parody... Cock rings. Fleshlights, cock rings, and foxhole butt plugs, we know what's in the trunk. There is a point where he's trying to make some quick cash, and he makes up a bunch of uses, mostly earrings for these these shower curtain rings. Yeah, he's a shower curtain sells There's a missed opportunity of trying to sell it to someone as a cock ring. That's true. I mean, maybe there was a cut scene. Apparently, apparently the initial cut of this movie, uh, of jo- uh, John Hughes had it at three hours and 45 minutes. I'm not surprised. Because you know these guys probably just ad-libbed forever. Maybe so. And that would have been honestly great. I don't know if I could sit through a nearly four-hour plane, trains, and automobiles. But seeing those two guys bounce off each other would be great. Yeah, the sequel would have had to have been automobiles. But three hours and 45 minutes, and apparently... <laughs> Apparently, there was a subplot where the wife that was cut, where the wife thinks that Neil is cheating on her because he can't get home and all these things are going wrong, which would have added more. That makes more sense. That would have added more depth to the wife character than what was provided in the movie because what we got in the movie after the final cut just kind of felt like a studio thing of like, all right, we got to show a pretty wife and some kids, okay? Yeah, well, and it, and she seems very sad. Listen, I would be, I would not love it if you were stuck somewhere and couldn't get home, but I would know that you're trying your best to get to me, you and just, we would talk as often as we could, and you, I would deal with my regular life, you hoping would, you'd be home soon. You would just be happy that I was safe. Yeah. I'd be happy that you were safe, that you were in contact with me. You were you were going to be okay. You're going to get home when you can. But there were these scenes of her like in bed at night, just like forlorn. And it's yeah. like, give me a break. They are, th- this is the worst part of the movie for me. Me too. I honestly feel like the movie would have been better if you kind of cut all the wife stuff. The wife becomes something, you know, like with Del Griffith's wife, we get a picture of his wife. And I love, like, her look that with the wife in his picture. And he's always referencing her. And I think it would have been... What we saw of the wife was not enough to justify or grab on. We should have never seen the wife. Exactly. She should have just been him talking to her on the phone over and over again. It could have been, like, a comical bit to have him constantly have to talk to her. And we hear almost, like, this 
nagging wah, 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 Charlie wah, 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 Brown wah, wah. voice yep. going off. That would have like lent it to more of a comedic aspect. And it wouldn't have given it any less emotional weight than what little we saw of his family. Because we saw not enough of him to really emotionally attach. We just know that Neil has a family and it's to signal. But, you know, a lot of us have families. We instinctively understand that. Playing off what you just said, one-upping that, if he was complaining about her nagging him the whole time, that could have been even stronger when Dell has the conversation with him of, you should appreciate the fact that you have a woman that loves you. That and would have been tears. That he doesn't just get taught that he needs to be more tolerant and open-hearted to people in need on Thanksgiving. But he needs to appreciate the to family appreciate and the woman got. that he has. Listen, I Did like... Did we just make this movie better? I like this movie, but yeah, we just fucking cut right to the meat of it. I bet you could cut this into you exactly what we could. You could cut this movie into that, yeah. Mentioned. Absolutely you could. Because the thing about this movie is it's a road movie, so... I mean, there's beats you could go through, but I don't think we need to hit all of them. But basically, they're trying to get to Chicago, and at every turn, Dell is trying to help Neil. yeah. yeah. And Neil is trying to get away from Dell because he's annoyed. Yeah, like they they ha- they share a they share a motel after they have to land in Wichita because it's a blizzard. But there's no motels, and Dell offers Neil like, "You can come with me. I know a guy. He knows a guy everywhere." Yeah, yeah, and and Dell they kind of have it out initially, and Steve Martin like straight up trashes. I mean, didn't you, didn't you notice on the plane when you started talking? Eventually, I started reading the vomit bag. Didn't that give you some sort of clue? Like, hey, maybe this guy's not enjoying it? You know, everything is not an anecdote. You have to discriminate. You choose things that are that are funny or, or mildly amusing or interesting. You're a miracle. Your stories have none of that. I mean, he's pretty annoying. In the he's hotel nice, room when yeah, he like when rips he's going, him? When he's trying to clear his sinuses. I and, mean, listen, he's annoying. And Neil goes off. But Dell responds in like the most nicest guy way is like, you know what? I like me. All right. And it makes Neil feel bad. You know, leading up into this, the mid eighties, Steve Martin was the comedic guy, but this, in yeah. this movie, he's the uptight straight man pretty much. The, he is the, he is playing the character that historically would have been a Charles Grodin. Yeah. Or, you know, someone like that. Like, a, a little bit more, like, humored than that, maybe. I, I honestly feel like, you know, Steve Martin is a good combination of the humorous guy and the straight guy. Yes. I feel like Phil Hartman is the best version oh, of that yes. ever. Yes, 100. Rest in peace, Rest in legend. Peace, Phil Hartman. Like, My he God. could do it both ways. But Steve Martin is, like, approaching that himself. I have one criticism of Steve Martin. His hair's too white. No, but also, like, was his hair ever not white? Uh, I think he was born like that. (laughs) With white hair. I recognize that Steve Martin is a prolific comedian, actor, banjo player, writer. Oh, I'm where she going with this? He he's very talented. Go on. But he does this thing Mm -hmm. that takes me out of his acting in almost every movie, at least for a moment. When he switches into that voice that's like his character from Little Shop of Horrors. And he goes like... The the crazy... Isn't he the doctor? The yeah, dentist? he's the crazy dentist. But there's like this thing where his face changes and his voice changes and he's like, Well, fuck. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And it's like, it's a, it's a hymnism. Part of the character necessarily. It's a thing he does that works and he's turning it up a notch and I get it but every time he does it I just go okay well look Steve Martin has one thing to say to that well excuse me I mean but otherwise cool you like you said Neil's trying to get away from they get a train and that's the trains part of planes trains and automobiles and Neil's like, oh, but we bought it for separate cars. But the train breaks down on the way to St. Louis. They have to get off the train. And they're at separate. They're like far from each other. And Neil looks over and sees Dell trying to drag his yeah. big case. And Neil jogs over and picks up the other end. Like, yeah. 
he's growing on him. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to be stuck with him. But he is at the core, like, nice enough to make this work. It's like, like, he feels guilt. He's not, like, a totally shallow character, but he's impatient and he gets frustrated. Yeah, he gets frustrated really easy. But, yeah, they, they end up... In the back of a truck at one point. Yeah. Oh, they find out that they were robbed. Yeah, when they stay When they some, were in the right. hotel, somebody sneaks into their room and takes all their cash. And also, prior to that, when they were checking into that hotel, they got their ca- credit cards mixed up. So, Neil picked up a like a discount like a traveler club card, card yeah. and Dell picked up his Amex or some shit. I don't know. But, so they had this, you know, switcheroo. But meanwhile, Neil is still paying for everything because he has plastic. He has credit cards. And then, yeah, there's kind of this breakup where Neil's like, listen, we're we're both almost going to get out of here. Let's just go our separate ways. We'll find our way on our own. And he goes to rent a car. Yeah. And and then they the car is not there. And he has to walk. All, this lot is far from the airport. So he has to walk. So far. And, he walk, and he's hitting mud. And it's just, it's just almost like overtly silly process to get to point a yes. to b just watching the neil character just be so flustered and frustrated but you kind of get it because you know how like when you're already frustrated and you're trying to do anything any inch on the way to getting the thing done just feels like frustration mounted on frustration and that's when he has the curse it curse out tirade with the lady fucking fucking Fucking, 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 fuck, fuck, fucking, 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 fucking. He says fuck like 20 times in that monologue. I really don't care for the way you're speaking to me. That monologue is what probably gave this the R rating. Absolutely it did. And I'm sure, I wonder if they just, do they just cut that out entirely when they show it on cable? So he goes out and he busts his ass. He's getting into it with some guy and a car almost runs over its head. And what do you know? It's Del Griffith in a rental car. So they're back together. Uh, and they're they're at St. Louis at this point, And they... It's like 100 miles. We were a little uh, a little nitpicky on the mileage and time that it took. Because <laughs> they're like... We've driven that. We've driven Yeah, that. we've driven to Chicago a few times. I've been there. I'm taking that journey. It's like eight straight hours from where we are. It's probably like... I mean, 100 miles, you're, you're two and a half hours... Unless there's any major stop. I guess once 100 you get the, miles is when the car dies. Once you get into the city, you could slow down but because of traffic. But, like, yeah, between two and a half to three hours, you're home, right? But the car, Dell does this thing where he's smoking while Neil is sleeping, and he flicks the smoking cigarette. Smoking and dancing and swerving all over the road, trying to, like, I entertain sm- himself. I, I felt this. I've not had a cigarette in many years. Same former smoker for 18 years and i know that feeling when you flick a cigarette out your crack car window and it flies back in and hits the back seat or the person in the back seat and i've done that and you're smell and suddenly you're like what is that smell right though it's a, a, a slow burn he was getting hot and he wanted to take his and jacket he got off hung on and his jacket arms got hung so he's trying to get out and and he spins on the off ramp, and he gets himself they all spin turned around a bunch of times. And so when he gets back on the interstate, he's going the wrong direction. Yeah, and Neil is asleep during that time, and then he wakes up, and he's like, "Everything's fine." And this car is tr- is They're going trying. alongside them. This would be us. They, they we did. would be like, "You're going the wrong way." He says we're going the wrong way. Oh, he's drunk. How would he know where we're going? Yeah, how would he know? They didn't occur to them that they're on the interstate. Like even when they hear, there's like that guy says we're going the wrong direction. I was like, no, no, we're no, we're. How not. do they know where we're going? And then two semis are going because they're going the wrong way down the interstate. I love this part so much. <laughs> I honestly think this is one of the funniest representations of absolute <laughs> terror. mortal terror yes. and fear yes. in any movie ever. The best you can do in a comedy is when they realize that they fucked up. And, and they're, they're between the semis. They're, to, to represent their absolute Sparks are fear, flying. They, you get this visual image that they're just like screaming skeletons. <laughs> and then Neil thinks it's like his last moment and he looks over and he sees Dell as a devil. Yes. Like cackling. 
Like his life is flashing before his eyes and he sees Dell as the devil. It kind of reminds me of like like in anime when they have these distinct reactions and they make these weird faces and mm. stuff, you know. I just thought it was just a very creative and very funny way to represent that terror. And so they go in between the semis and it shreds the car. And then they have to pull over because they've just panicked out. And as they're arguing out in the street. The cigarette finally catches the car on fire. And the car is on fire. They drive the car. After it burns up, it still drives. Also, their credit cards are burnt up in it, too. Yes, because Neil's wallet was in the glove box. So then they get pulled over by Officer Michael McKean, who uh, has to impound the car because it's not legal to drive. And by this point, they're actually very bonded Mm -hmm. and very much laughing and having a good time. And then they have to hitch a ride in in the cooler in the back of a milk truck. And they finally get get to Chicago to the L station. Oh well, yeah, because but they got drunk the night before. Yeah, yeah. Well, on like little the little liquor yeah, airport. That liquor was, yeah, bottles. that was a really sweet scene. You know what? I'm dead and buried. All I'm gonna have around here to prove that I was here was some shower curtain rings that didn't fall down. Great legacy, huh? At the very least, the absolute minimum. You've got a woman you love to grow old with, right? You love her, don't you? Love is not a big enough word. And then they get to the L station to take the train to go to their respective homes. And um, and Neil's like, you know, it's very sweet. They say goodbye to each other. Happy Thanksgiving, Neil. Okay. Give my love to the family, will you? Same to you. Maybe I'll get a chance to meet him one day. Okay. Uh, say hello to Marie for me. feel like I know her. Yeah. So, okay. And uh, you have a happy Thanksgiving. Hey, you know it. <laughs> so long. And so he gets on the train, and he, and then we get flashbacks to the whole movie itself, which often is silly, but this movie it was endearing. But this, this movie is yeah. a very sweet movie. This is kind of a big. Uh, what I really do like about it, like that's what makes it a good Thanksgiving movie. Yeah. And in flashbacks in his head, he's going through. Like the Rolodex in his memory and these little things in which Dell is saying things like, you know, I haven't been home in years, blah, blah, blah. He's starting to piece things together and he realizes that he has nowhere to go. So he gets off the train, takes it back, walks into the train station and Dell's just sitting there. I love that part so much. Neil's just like, what are you doing here? You said you were going home. What are you doing here? I, uh... I don't have a home. Marie's been dead for eight years. Airports and train stations, that's where he just hangs around at. So Neil's like, let's go. You're so, coming with so me. So the end of the movie, we and see... they adopted him. Neil and Dell carrying the trunk, walking down to Neil's house. I do believe that, you know, cutting the wife out and making that more of like a, a dissonant thing would be preferable. Mm-hmm. And it, the movie would have been perfect if like... You saw Dell and like a maybe a distant shot, Dell holding the trunk with Neil, and they just they greet the wife. You see the wife greet him at the door the kids hug and him. hug him, and then but and like a over. far shot, and then they walk in, and that's the they end of the movie. Need to go in the house. But they literally go into the house. That's too much. And we see the wife and the kids, and they're hugging, and she's like acts like she hasn't seen him in a year, right? And. And it's very... Give me a break. Yeah, it's like they've been apart for so long. I swear and, I'd be like, and Del, home! Come we, help me with something. And we just get the revelation <laughs> that Dell's wife is dead, and he gets to sit here and watch his boy, like, kiss all that over his bullshit. wife. That's why it should have ended with with a distant shot of them of walking the, into the house. Because the only thing that Matt It doesn't even matter that Neil gets home to his family. He does get home to his family, and that's good. 
But the thing that matters is that Neil and Dell are real friends. Yeah, now. they and are true. They are friends. the movie. They're the best part. The they are the important parts. They're the only thing that matters. Only when thing. they are getting drunk in that hotel room, they have gotten to the point of. I can do nothing but laugh because right before that, Neil was fucking pissed at Dale and he rented a hotel room and was going to leave Dale out in the car. Like Dale had no money. Neil like gave away his watch to get that hotel room and he realizes like, I can't rest because this guy that I actually care about is out in the freezing cold and he opens the door and he's like, you're going to freeze out there. Yeah. They come in, they start drinking, they start laughing. I mean, how do they... He's like, someday I'm going to laugh about this. Just kidding. I'm going to laugh about it right the fuck now. It's so good. Planes, trains, and automobiles. I would say, um, yeah, I would say, you know, what's... Where's, where does the, where does this... Is this above Son-in-Law for you? For Thanksgiving movies? I really love Son-in-Law, but yes, this is above Son-in-Law. I'm trying to think of it. We're going to see I this... I really love Son-in-Law. The slasher movie, the Eli Ross slasher, will drop tomorrow. We watched, no one will have time to watch it until maybe, like, late at night. We watched, like, a A24 pilgrim horror movie a couple years ago that was not any good man that you don't even remember it in one ear out the other we did one, though but. i don't know it's probably like a hula i thing. mean they're they're trying they're trying but yeah, like yeah. there's just not many like solid ones Mm-mm. but uh but yeah i'm gonna put this up there and let's let's review it you're gonna give it a one through five i'm gonna give it one through five combined for best out of five as i said eli ross thanksgiving we will discuss tomorrow yes but I got to say, it's very strange. In December, we're going to be going to the theater like every week for our Wednesday drops during Christmas I'm time. I'm excited. But new movies get the least traction on our YouTube. Literally. Because people I've, haven't seen I'm, them. Well, maybe. I think also the 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 algorithm is also dominated to sell probably tickets. by the companies themselves, which is kind of understandable. Makes sense. Yeah. But like literally when we're when we talk about old movies, they get the most traction, which I'm pleasantly surprised by. Yeah, actually. that makes me happy. But this one should do pretty well too. It seems like eighties and before, like people will come and listen to what we're saying. You're gonna give this one through five, I'm gonna give this one through five combined for best out of ten. Um I I do like this one, uh, as far as John Hughes fairs go. I've always been up and down on the guy, but I am just drawn to this one and I love John Candy. We pointed out the imperfections and some certain things that I really do think would have made the movie just about perfect. And it just kind of felt like a trope seeing the wife what little we do because she didn't really bring anything to it. Agreed. We explained how we could have improved that. We stand by that. But uh, but I do think it's a worthy 3.75. That's exactly what I was going to give it. Cool. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to so give it. That's a 7.5. Yeah. That's a good score. Cool. So that's like high B. Yeah. B plus. Okay, so I have uh, readjusted. This is the first time that we will show this. Late last night, I readjusted the ratings and how we do them. Okay. And I've adjusted some things up and down. Without so, me, you did it. Well, this, is, this isn't this is something we can do to get... It's, it's going to be boring if we make a video of these like, what do you do with this? So what I did was I made choices... And what you can do, you can go in and make your own choices and you can move things up and down as I do. Some things drop their position. Also, F tier went from like if you hit like a zero to 2.75, 2.75 range, you're F tier. Whoa, 2.75 is an F? I upped it to three. So if you hit okay, a three okay. or under, you're F. So S tiers are. I put it up to 9.25. It went from 9.5 to 9.25. Okay. Now, the thing that S tier and F tier have in common is if you make S tier, you're just S tier. Okay. Right? So, you're- They're not in an You're order. listed in alphabetical order. Okay, I like that. In the hall of movie humper or humpy awesomeness. And F tier is the same way. If you hit three or under, you're just shit. So, it's one line. I love but that. But for all the other rankings, like A- like in the A tiers, it's 7.70, 7.75 to 9. So it shows like all the ranks. Like these are all the 9s, alphabetical order. These are all the 8.75s. Okay. Order. So we're not picking better than the other. We're just alphabetical within the exactly. I like that. I like and it's kind of stupid because it's just pointlessly splitting hairs. We're not even thinking about it. Yeah. And, and plus we did, I have gone back and some things have dropped. So there's more F tiers. There's more D tier. There's F tier movies. There's more D tier movies. And there's B tiers. But this one is B tier. All right, let me show it. 
See here, based on our new system, it's a 7.5, a B plus. So right here between matching and uniform and role models. Ooh. It's just an alphabetical order. Mm-hmm. Also, Speak No Evil dropped to a 7.5 as well. Okay. All right. And there you go. Planes, trains. Um, we'll we'll do an, an actual Thanksgiving Day drop. You probably won't have time to hear it until all the family go away. But if you want to hear us talk about the new Eli Roth slasher, it will be out tomorrow. In the meantime, uh, check the show notes for links to other places to find us. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. That isn't, like, hateful for whatever reason. But people have actually been quite nice. And most of all, happy Thanksgiving if you're in the United States. Beyond that, happy Harvest Holiday. And happy holidays. Happy holidays. Life to all lovers. Del Griffith. Del Griffith. Del Griffith. I can take anything. Fucking fucking. Fucking 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 fucking